Welcome to our lecture online and here's our next topic in the chemistry of gases and we're now going to talk about the density of a gas. And so traditionally the density is in any sense is defined as the mass per unit volume and so the unit for that would be the number of kilograms of gas that we have per cubic meter. Now no, normally we in chemistry typically have volume also in terms of liters but as long as we know that these are the standard units that we use we can always convert back to liters and grams if we have to. We're also going to need the definition of the ideal gas law, the ideal gas equation which is at PV equals nRT and we're going to combine the definition of density with the ideal gas equation to come up with a good equation to define the density of a gas. So next we also need to have the definition of the number of moles of a gas. So how many moles of a gas do we have? Well that, that depends on the mass that you have of the gas divided by the molar mass. So if we take the mass of the gas divided by the molar mass we end up with the number of moles. As an example let's say you have a container of 80 grams of oxygen. If you divide 80 grams by the molar mass of oxygen which is 16 grams per mole you get 5 moles. So all those things put together will allow us to come up with a good definition for the density of a gas and then a nice equation to be able to use to calculate the density of a gas. So next what we're going to do is we're going to replace the number of moles in the ideal gas equation by mass divided by molar mass. So this now becomes P times V, the pressure times the volume, is equal to the mass of the gas divided by the molar mass times the gas constant times the temperature of the gas. Okay now next what we want to do is come up with this definition right here which def the density is equal to the mass divided by the volume and since we have mass here and we have volume here in this equation we can then rearrange that equation to write it as mass over volume. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the mass down here the, the uh, molar mass up here and R and T down here. So remember when you have a uh, uh, two fractions that are equal to each other, let's say A over B is equal to C over D, you can move things across the diagonal. You can move the D over here, you can move the B down, up there, you can take the C down here, you can take the A down there, you can move things across the diagonal. So whatever was on the denominator on the right side goes to the numerator on the left side, whatever was on the numerator on the left side goes down to the denominator on the right side and so forth. So whenever we have something like this, you can think of this as PV over 1, and you can think of this as MRT over M, so you can move things across the diagonal. So we're going to rewrite this equation as follows. We're going to keep the P up here. The M which is in the denominator here goes to the top and goes to the numerator on the left side. Remember this only works when you multiply things together. We're going to divide that by the R which is in the numerator there comes to the denominator on the left side and the temperature which is in the numerator here goes to the denominator on the left side equals mass will stay where it is and volume will come down to the denominator over here. All right, so now we have M over V defined as PM divided by RT. And so what we can do here is we can take this and replace it by this quantity right here. So this here is now going to go in here and now we can redefine the density of the gas as equal to the pressure of the gas times the molar mass divided by the gas constant and the temperature of the gas. Now we have an equation that defines the density of the gas. Now in the next video I'm also going to show you there's other ways in which you can talk about density of a gas. The number of moles per volume, the number of molecules per volume, sometimes we like to talk about in terms of number of molecules per cubic centimeter. And so we'll show that in the next video. But here is the true definition of density. The unit to this is going to be kilograms per cubic meters. So let's take a little example. Here it is. Let's say we want to figure out the density of helium gas when the uh, pressure is at 2.5 atmospheres and the temperature of the gas is 40 degrees centigrade. What would be the density of that gas? And remember, we don't care about the volume, it's simply per unit volume, so therefore we don't need to have a certain amount of volume of the gas. So let's plug in what we know. Density is equal to the pressure, 2.5 atmospheres, okay, but that's not standard units. We have to convert that to the number of pascals or newtons per square meter in terms of atmosphere, so that's 101,325 pascals or newtons per square meter per atmosphere. So we simply multiply 2.5 times the number of pascals in atmospheric pressure and we get the standard units for pressure. Molar mass, well we're dealing with helium here. The molar mass of helium is 4 grams per mole. 
that means it's 0.004 kilograms per mole. So 0.004 kilograms per mole for helium. Okay, next, the gas constant. So we divide by 8.31. You know, I've been writing 0 0.4, 3, 0 0.314, 0 0.315. It doesn't really matter. It's right around in the middle of those two things. So 8.314 joules per Kelvin per, actually, it's per mole per Kelvin. That's the units, uh, the way we write the units here. All right, and then the temperature. Okay, we said temperature was at 40 degrees centigrade. We also know that a zero degree centigrade is equal to 273 Kelvin. So 40 degrees centigrade is 40 degrees more than that. So what's 40 plus 273? 313. So that would be 313 Kelvin. So remember, 273 plus 40 equals 313. So this is the temperature in Kelvin when the temperature in centigrade degrees is 40. You just have to add 273 to it. All right, now we have everything in place. We're now ready to use our calculator and find out what that number is. So we have 2.5 times 101,325 uh, times 0 0.004 divided by 8.314 and divided by 313 equals, and there it is, the density 0 0.389 kilograms per cubic meter. So that would be density. It's a little less than a pound of helium gas in a cubic meter. What if we want to convert that to grams per liter? Because sometimes, instead of using the standard unit kilograms per cubic meter, we like to have it in terms of grams per liter. All right, let's convert that. And I'm going to raise that part right there so we can do a nice little conversion. So if we want to convert from kilograms to grams, we want grams at the top, kilograms at the bottom, and we know that one kilogram is a thousand grams. So simply moving the decimal place over three places turns kilograms into grams, but we also want to convert from cubic meters to liters. And so we want liters in the bottom, cubic meters at the top, and so we have one cubic meter is 1,000 liters. Wow, take a look at that. So now to go from cubic meters to liters, we have to divide by 1,000. So basically, this cancels out that, and so the units of kilograms per cubic meter is the same as grams per liter. And so we can say then that this is equal to 0 0.389 grams per liter. So that's a very interesting way of looking at it. So standard units, use kilograms per cubic meter, but in chemistry we often use grams and liters, grams for mass and liters for volume. So notice that the actual number doesn't change because you divide and multiply by 1,000 to get both conversions. So that hopefully gives you a good, a good feeling for what density is and how you calculate density of a gas by simply taking the basic definition of density and using the ideal gas equation and the understanding that the number of moles of a gas is always equal to the mass of the gas divided by the molar mass of the mass per mole. And there you have it.